Hey everyone, Josh Powers with Quixel. And in today's video, we're going to get back to Mixer's roots and quickly retexture a Megascan surface. So let's get started. Though the Megascans library is vast, there will likely be times where you'll want to change the look of a surface to fit your needs. And that's precisely why we created Mixer. So let's hop over to the library and we'll search for a surface that will give us a good foundation to work with. This wall panel here looks like it'll be a great starting point. And all we'll do for this layer is change the blend to be opacity mask so that the layer is fully visible. While the surface looks great on its own, we can change it up to better work with whatever environment we're creating. So let's focus on the wallpaper first, which I want to swap out with something other than red. We'll head back to the library and then I'll go with this green wallpaper here. We'll pull up the threshold and then set the wrap to underlying to one so that we can see the height and normal information of our wall panel below. Now obviously we don't want the wallpaper tiling across our trim and wainscoting, so we need to apply a mask. Now we could just give the layer itself a mask, but the problem is, as we add more layers to the wallpaper portion of this texture, we'll not only want to reserve the layer masking for more creative uses, but we also don't want to have to keep masking each layer involved. So what we can do instead is select the wallpaper layer and group it by pressing Ctrl G and giving it a name. And now we can mask the group itself. We'll first add a position gradient to mask most of the wainscoting. Then we'll need to add another position gradient to mask the little section of crown molding at the top of the wall. Once we set this layer's blend mode to add, we can drop in an invert modifier, and now we have the wallpaper section of the texture perfectly masked off. All right, because we turned on wrap to underlying, the new wallpaper surface is retaining the original wallpaper's normal and height detail. In this case, I don't actually want that, so what I can do is turn the blending method to be opacity mask, and then drop the wrap to underlying back to zero. From here, I can adjust the threshold to position the wallpaper's height to where I want it. Now I have only the normal and height data from my new wallpaper surface. Besides just changing the wallpaper, we can also add some weathering and grime to make it feel a bit older and more run down. So back in the library, we'll search for the word flaked and then select this flaked wood wall surface. And the first thing we'll do is adjust the threshold a little bit and then turn on wrap to underlying. We can also play with the offsets to adjust the position of the details a little bit. And then we'll adjust the height intensity sliders to bump up the strength of those flaked sections of the surface. All right, now let's go ahead and desaturate the albedo some. And then we'll drop the opacity down to a little less than halfway. Now to really blend this surface into the wallpaper, we're going to give the layer a mask stack and we'll use a map component. Using the layer map option, we'll select the same flaked wood layer, and we'll use the displacement texture as our mask texture. From there, we can adjust the range a little bit, which will let us keep the damaged flaking details while masking out the rest. And we also get some of the flaked wood albedo showing through, which I think adds to the dirty weathered look we're going for here. All right, I think that'll work as a good base for this wallpaper, so let's move on to the wainscoting. For this texture, I want the wood to be a bit darker and more saturated, and to achieve this, I'm going to use a few solid layers with some procedural masking. So I'll click this icon here and add a solid layer, and we'll change to opacity mask and wrapped underlying to one before we go and give the albedo a nice dark reddish brown value. We'll also turn the roughness channel for this layer off so that we can continue to use the roughness value of the original surface. Like the wallpaper, I'll group this layer, give it a name, and then add a mask stack so that all the layers in this folder will be masked to the wainscoting. Now I could do this manually as I did before, but what I can also do to save time is copy the wallpaper folder's mask and then paste it on the wood folder. Then if we hop into the mask stack, all we need to do is delete that invert modifier and now our folder is masked to the wood portions of the surface only. Easy peasy. Now that the group mask is in place, we can add a mask to the solid layer to start crafting the look of this wood. In this case, we'll simply use a map component using the layer map option, and then we'll choose the base wall panel layer as our source. We'll set the texture to roughness and then invert the results. And as we play with the range settings a little, we can see some of the grain from the original texture coming back in, which is exactly what we want. All right, let's add some minor edge wear. To do this, we'll add another solid layer, set it to opacity mask, wrap to underlying to one, 
and then we'll hop down to the albedo and give it a very dark desaturated yellow tint. After changing the blending mode to add, we'll go ahead and give the layer a mask stack. And for this one, I think that we'll use a curvature component. We can hit 9 on the keyboard to go into mask mode so that we can see our mask as we make adjustments. And really all we're going to do here is play with the level values a little bit so that we're really only picking up more of the edges. If we go back to render mode, we can toggle the layer to see the effects it's having. If we go to albedo mode by pressing 2 on the keyboard, we can see what's going on a lot more clearly. The final result is fairly subtle, which is exactly what we're going for. It just adds a bit of depth and interest to the surface. Adding another solid layer, we'll again select Opacity Masked and wrap it to Underlying. And then we'll give this one a bit of a darker orange tint. For this layer, I want to add some additional finishing wear along the wood grain. And as you probably guessed, we'll achieve this through the mask stack. And we'll once again use the map component. We'll use the layer map option to choose the original wall panel we have as our base, and this time we'll use the albedo as our texture. Back in mask view, we'll pinch in the sliders a little bit to get some nice highlights of the areas of wood outside the wood grain. Now if we go back to render mode, we have a bit of a faded look to the planks using the source texture's own albedo map as a mask. The last step we're going to do for the wood specifically is just some general wear, tear, and scratching. So we'll add another solid layer, and set it to opacity mask and wrap to underlying to 1, and then we'll go ahead and give the albedo a lighter yellow, almost tan look to it. Alright, now let's add on a mask stack, and we'll start off with the map component, and this time we're going to use a library asset. We'll go to the imperfections category and we'll search for varnish. And I think this one here will work well. We'll go ahead and pull up the left range slider and then I think we'll be done with this one. This will just give us a random noise mask to start with. On top of this we can add a curvature component. We'll set it to edges only and then we'll play with the tightness and levels. Now if we set the blend mode to multiply, we'll get a nice combination of the map component we added before, along with some influence from the curvature information. Then lastly, we'll throw on another map component. We'll once again choose the library asset option, and we'll grab a nice simple dust imperfection right here. We'll invert the results and then bump the left range slider up a bit, and we'll see some nice scratches and chips coming through. Now all we need to do is set the blend to add, and then we'll drop the opacity down until we're happy with the results. Now if we go back to render mode, we can see how this subtle damage layer is helping us further sell the weathering of the surface. I use similar techniques on the next few layers to add some additional weathering, dirt, and grime across the entire texture. And though I just used solid layers in this case, I could have easily leveraged scan data from the library to add even more detail with each layer I created. Having the ability to use scan surfaces alongside procedural masking components that respect your asset's geometry, normal, and height data allows you to quickly achieve the results you're looking for without trading quality for speed. And since this is a non-destructive approach, you can always go back and make adjustments to your mask to alter its appearance afterwards. And you can even save mask stack presets or smart materials, which will save you even more time in future mixes. And to finish things off, we can add a few Megascans decals to the mix. Decals are a great way to inject some additional dirt and grime without having to jump into the mask stack, although you can still use the masking on decals for further control. By adjusting the transforms on the decals, along with tweaking the opacity, blend modes, visible layers, and more, you can easily repurpose decals to look like something different from its original intention. For example, we can use this blood stain to create a more conventional staining that will go on this wall. And there you have it. We were able to utilize the normal and height data of one surface and give it a fresh new look quickly and non-destructively. And whether you want to use scan data, high poly bakes, or procedural height maps, Mixer along with the ever-growing Megascans library is here to help you pump out high quality textures without breaking a sweat. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.